Okay, so we're going to look at certain subsequences of arithmetic and geometric sequences. So just to recap, an arithmetic sequence is one where you always add the same amount going from term to term. So here you would start with some value a, and then you would add the common difference d to get to the next term. So to get up to the nth term, you'd need to add d n minus 1 times. This is where this nth term formula comes from. We've got a similar one for geometric sequences. You start with some value which we'll call b now, then you multiply by a common ratio r to get to the next term. So to get to the nth term, you'd need to multiply by r n minus 1 times. And because we're going to be working with subsequences here, we're going to impose that a, d, b, and r all have to be positive integers so that our subsequence is well defined. So the sort of subsequence we'll look at first is where we start with a geometric sequence, but instead of taking just g1, g2, g3, all the terms in this sequence, we take a subsequence according to an arithmetic sequence. So what this might look like, just to show you a simple numerical example might be g3, g7, g11, g15, and so on, where the first term is not g1, but it's the first term according to the arithmetic sequence. So here the arithmetic sequence is just going up by 4 each time, so we're skipping some terms and working with this subsequence. And there's a nice way of expressing the nth term of such a subsequence in the more general form because we can use this formula but replace this n here by an a n, which gives us the nth term of this subsequence is going to be b times r to the a n minus 1. And we know that a n is a plus n minus 1 d, so we've got b r to the a plus n minus 1 d minus 1, and then we can factor out some terms onto the left, so we can get rid of our r to the power of a and our r to the negative 1 terms, giving us b r to the a minus 1 multiplied by r to the n minus 1 d. And this is starting to look actually more like a geometric sequence, perhaps with different values. And by rewriting this r to the n minus 1 d as r to the d raised to the power of n minus 1, you can see that this is indeed a geometric sequence, where our first term now is going to be b r to the a minus 1. So this is our new first term of this subsequence and our new common ratio is going to be r to the power of d. So this is what we multiply by to get to the next terms. So this is our new common ratio for this subsequence. And I think this is quite intuitive, thinking about the new common ratio, that here with this numerical example we're skipping some terms. So we're actually, instead of just multiplying by r, we're multiplying here by r to the power of 4 to go from term to term, because we're multiplying by r four terms to get from one term to the next. So at each step you're just multiplying by r to the power of 4. And more generally if it was going along d terms we were skipping d terms according to a general arithmetic sequence with common difference d. You would multiply by r d times going from term to term. So this explains why our new common ratio is r to the power of d. And you can also see that the first term has changed, because instead of just being b, the first term of our geometric sequence, you might also have multiplied by r a certain number of times, which is determined by what the first value in our arithmetic sequence is as well. So this is why we get a different first term for this new subsequence as well. So now let's look at what happens when we take our subsequence but the other way round. So if we start with an arithmetic sequence, let's say we have a, but then instead of taking a n, we take a subsequence according to a geometric sequence. So just like before, we can replace the n here in the nth term formula by a g n. So we have a plus g n minus 1 times d, and we know the nth term formula g n for our geometric sequence, so we can write this as a plus b r to the m minus 1 minus 1 times d, and then expanding this bracket and taking the negative d over to the left, we get a minus d plus, then for this multiplication we'll write it as b d r to the n minus 1. So it looks almost like a geometric sequence, and we've got an extra little bit added here, this a minus d. So we end up with a constant term plus some multiple of a geometric sequence here, where we can think of this whole expression as being a geometric sequence where the first term is bd and the common ratio is r. And I think a nice way of interpreting this is just to go back to 
our original first step, AGN is A plus GN minus 1 times D. And then instead of substituting in the nth term formula for GN, you can see we're just applying a very simple operation to GN here. So we've got A minus D plus D times GN. So you can see now we've got this small constant term that we're going to be adding plus some multiple of our geometric sequence. So it's saying then that we have a starting term in an arithmetic sequence, but then we go along a geometric sequence's number of terms along that sequence. So we're going along more and more terms each time according to our geometric sequence. So now let's look at what happens where we've got two arithmetic sequences. So we've got xn is 1 with a1 and d1 as the first term and common difference respectively. And similarly we've got yn with a2 and d2. So if we were to take a subsequence x, y, n like this, then just like before, we'd replace our n by y, n. So we'd have a1 plus y, n minus 1 times d1, which we can then write as y, n is a2 plus n minus 1 d2. So we can substitute this in, and then we've still got minus 1 multiplied by d1. So then expanding the brackets, we've got a1 plus a2 d1 plus n minus 1 d2 times d1 or write as d1 d2 and finally minus d1. So then we can factorize these two terms here to give us we've got a1 plus a2 minus 1 times d1 plus n minus 1 times d1 d2 at the end. So now we've got another arithmetic sequence from this subsequence where We've got a new first term, which is our original first term, plus something extra to represent that we may have gone a few extra steps along according to the first term of this second sequence. But then we've also got the n minus 1 times d has been replaced by n minus 1 multiplied by d1 d2. So our new common difference is just the product of our original two common differences. And there's quite a nice way of seeing why this works. So if we go from x1 to x2 to x3, let's imagine our common difference was 3 for this one, so it's plus 3 each time. And then if we have our sequence y1, y2, y3, let's say for this sequence you're adding 5 to go from each term. So here d2 would be 5 and d1 would be 3. To go from the first term in x y1 to the next term x, y2 to the next term x, y3, you're not just going along 3 each time, you're going along 3, but you do it 5 times to go from term to term in this subsequence. So here you would need to add 3 5 times, so you have plus 3 times 5. And similarly here, to go from one term to the next, instead of just adding 3, you would do this 5 times. So this is quite a nice intuitive way of seeing why the new common difference between terms is the product of the original two common differences. And now finally, let's look at what happens when we've got two geometric sequences. So if we have a geometric sequence xn and another one yn, what happens when we look at the nth term of our subsequence x, yn? So using what we know, replacing n by yn here, we get a1 times r1 to the power of yn minus 1, and then we know what yn is, so we get a1 times r1 to the power of a2 r2 to the n minus 1, subtract 1 there. And there's not a great deal we can do to simplify this. We could take this r1 to the power of negative 1 out, so dividing through by r1 we get a1 over r1, but then we're still left with this r1 to the power of a2 times r2 to the n minus 1. And because we've got a number raised to a power raised to this power of n minus 1, there's not a great deal we can do to simplify this other than perhaps put our r1, a2 in brackets. And you can see this number is being raised to the power of r2 to the n minus 1. So our nth term here tells us that this subsequence isn't actually a geometric sequence anymore, which is quite interesting that for me, intuitively thinking about this, I thought maybe we would still get a geometric sequence when we take this subsequence, only the common ratio might be one of the common ratios raised to the power of the other, for example. But what we've got here is something that grows bigger and bigger, much faster than a typical geometric sequence would. Because instead of just being 
a number raised to the power of n, we've got a number raised to a power of a number raised to the power of n minus 1 here. So this is going to grow bigger and bigger much faster than a geometric sequence would. So let's just look at a numerical example. Let's say our xn is the powers of 2, and let's say that yn is our powers of 3. So 3 times 3 to the n minus 1. So this gives us a1 is 2, and r1 is also 2. And here we've got a2, our first term is 3, and our common ratio is also 3 for this example. So here we can use this formula now to see that x, y, n, this nth term in this subsequence, first of all our a1 over r1 is just 2 divided by 2, so we don't need to include that term, it's just 1. But then we've got r1 to the a2, so 2 to the power of 3, or 8, raised to the power of r2 to the n minus 1. So here r2 is 3, so this is raised to the power of 3 to the power of n minus 1. So here we're getting 8 raised to the power of 3 raised to the power of n minus 1. And this isn't the same thing as doing 8 to the power of 3, which is 512 raised to the n minus 1, which is more in line with my intuition for the sort of sequence we might expect to get here. But because we have to work downwards, we would do 3 to the power of n minus 1 and then raise 8 to the power of that to work out the nth term in this sequence. So this sequence is going to grow bigger and bigger extremely rapidly, even more so than a geometric sequence would.